Okay, so our uh, next speaker uh, is Hayden Peterswald, uh, also from Amazon. And uh, the topic will be the uh, new container and service mesh uh, expert group. Um, this will be a pre recorded uh, talk. Um, so, Naomi. <clears throat> Hi, folks. Hayden Peterswald here. Um, I wanted to talk to you today about the new expert group that we're setting up with AGL. And this is the containers and mesh, e.g. And in it, we're going to look at bringing cloud native computing to automotive grade Linux. I'm an automotive specialist solution architect with AWS, and I'm leading this new EG with AGL. Now, no other industry is undergoing such a massive technological change as automotive, where historically OEMs were trying to differentiate themselves with mechanical features, you know, horsepower, handling, um, and the kind of like, you know, eye catching design and the more uh, premium model lines. We're now seeing OEMs competing over the implementation and availability of, of software services, whether that's uh, an advanced driver assistance system, uh, lane keeping, start and stop adaptive crew control, autopilot from Tesla, or the Super Cruise system that Cadillac's developing now. And also the sophisticated infotainment systems, you know, seeing kind of this mobile phone like user experience in our app stores, uh, multi screen video playback. We shift from single purpose ECUs to these consolidated high performance compute architectures are enabling this change. And combining this with the move to electric powertrains, um, the need for high bandwidth networking, you know, taking AV sensor feeds and fundamental changes are needing to happen and are happening in vehicle architectures. Um, first, safety. We see these new software services, have software and hardware combined with stability control, you know, rear facing cameras, emergency call, and even tracking emissions standards throughout the lifetime of a vehicle. And these need sophisticated software, where in the past, it really was quite, you know, it was simple. There's maybe a number, a large number of ECUs, and that number's been increasing. But the software is becoming more complex too. And when you look at the data flowing within a vehicle network today, the up to 25 gigabytes of data exchange per hour in a in a modern, you know, in a modern top of the range vehicle. And this isn't even including uh, the sensor data that's needed for an autonomous uh, feature, like thinking video feeds, LiDAR, and such. Now, OEMs typically shoulder the burden of integration testing of these ECUs. And for the most part, they treat them like black boxes. You know, we have these um, got input definitions, output, maybe the you know power requirements, like thermal threshold, but there's very little that they can do within the ECU itself. And if they need to to get changes to this, changes to these interfaces, that feedback loop can be significant. And because they're responsible for the system testing and integration, as the complexity of the software, the complexity of the system increases, the time to run a system integration cycle can increase and it's what we're seeing at the moment with our customers at aws and we think we can change that you know and, and it has to change because the growth of the you know the software complexity and the you know see on this chart right the electronic system as a percentage of total car cost it's forecast that it's going to be 50 percent of the total cost to develop a vehicle by 2030 and that's the software, hardware, and the, the testing of it. And so there's going to be a, it's it's going to be increasingly difficult, increasingly lengthy and costly to develop the kind of systems that you know the industry wants to bring to their customers. And lastly, you just want to touch on supply chain fragility. You know, over the last year, year and a half, the disruption of the global um, manufacturing supply chain, particularly looking at silicon providers has had a has a catastrophic impact on on vehicle development right there's been millions of cars fewer produced and um, a big part of that has been lack of access to certain ecus and when you think about a car taking 100 or 150 ecus to produce if you were missing a handful for for key features it has a, a significant impact um, on production lines and so we can reduce the number of ecus into consolidated runtimes consolidated hardware 
we believe this will naturally um, expose the industry to less disruption in the long term. And I encourage anyone to go and have a look at this uh, Spectrum Triple E, I Triple E uh, article for software eating the car because it really um, encompasses everything that we're talking about when we talk about software defined vehicles today and some of the challenges the industry is facing. So, what do we mean when we say software defined uh, and what can we do to get there? So, in particular, you know, it's the, the fact that we want to abstract software functionality away from the hardware in a vehicle. And one of the ways of doing this is to use a, a cloud native uh, technology stack. Right? So looking at something like, something like Kubernetes, something that can handle uh, containerized microservices and support bringing that into the vehicle. And we can then start looking at what we're calling virtual ECUs, right? So. Uh, System component that can be packaged into containers deployed in a microservice architecture um, within the vehicle itself and then deployed to and administered over the air. Containers are getting traction across the industry, but existing solutions, which are typically direct under the hypervisor, don't enable the kind of control or flexibility that you see in a, a typical container orchestration framework in cloud or on prem. I can kind of break the, the features for software defined for cloud native into a few different areas and, and what it gives us. So the consolidation and virtualization, right? This is the idea that we're reducing the um the number of ECUs uh, into smaller chunks, maybe even to higher power domain controllers, um, in vehicle microservice established. So that's you know service-oriented container-based microservice architecture that normalizes the um, the platform that software can be developed for. And then encapsulation, again, containers here to give us that virtual ECU concept. All of these combine to give us a, a move to you know, increased agility when developing software for automotive. You call automotive DevOps pipelines, CICD pipelines, to rapidly develop and deliver services both during uh, you know, product development. So whether that's building and testing software and software in the loop, hardware in the loop, um, and then also a better operational capability once the vehicle's launched. So improved testing leading to more frequent updates. Uh, so combining over the air with a continuous delivery pipeline uh, when you can combine software that's coming in from multiple suppliers, you know, like complex web of suppliers that feed into a, a modern vehicle. And application layer networking gives this dynamic um, system configurability at runtime. Right, So rather than being fixed, you can deploy uh, microservice layers that can then have the connectivity with the services, whether that's in the vehicle or off board, you know, at the network edge or in cloud. Um, improve the, you know, the high availability and also the the ability to change, right? So the ability to add software features into a vehicle platform years after it's been sold to an individual, after it's left the shop floor. This just has a quick look at the um, how we see the trend in vehicle architecture, what we're seeing now and what we expect to see in the future. So on the left, you have the kind of traditional um, traditional platform, maybe 100, 150 CUs total into a vehicle. In the center here, the domain architecture is what is just starting to happen today. So there's vehicles on the road now that follow this kind of pattern, where you have three, four, or five um, higher powered domain controller, multi-core domain controllers, um within the vehicle and this is an architecture that a physical architecture that we can start already deploying cloud native tech onto right so some of these uh controllers have four five six seven cores and multiple hypervisor partitions and by starting the development of this architecture now this software abstraction is going to make it easier to deploy and manage the zonal architectures in vehicles the kind of thing that you might see in a kind of very modern electric vehicle. And this is where almost all of the compute happens within a single or two HPC units, uh, which have then have automated grade 
Ethernet for networking. And then zonal gateways are parts of the vehicle typically to reduce the wiring harness cost and to uh, take feeds from sensors, actuators, and AV inputs. So what do we mean by cloud native computing? Right. Well, a cloud native computing foundation is a Linux foundation project founded in 2015. Uh, it launched with Kubernetes 1.0, and it now covers dozens of projects within that, that space, right? So it's containers, service mesh, project to help with security, um, operational um, features, and a lot of stuff on observability as well of complex um, complex microservice architectures, microservice and container-based architectures. And what do we need to bring that to AGL? Well, there's a few key features that we want to pursue to get a, a reference implementation of cloud native computing on Ultima of Great Linux. And we need a container engine. So something like Docker. Now there's a lot of other stuff out there. Um, the container orchestration. So you know, Kubernetes, multiple different Kubernetes distributions, um, and also some some other packages that give similar functionality. Right. And so our container engine handles container management on a single node. Container orchestration gives you container management across multiple nodes. So, you know, pod based management. Um, and that's really what we're trying to target here, where you might have multiple hypervisor partitions, multiple compute units for a vehicle. And finally, the service mesh. So, this is the application level networking for service to service communication, so that you don't need to uh, handle, um, you know, service discovery. You don't need to handle network timeouts, you know, retry behavior. Uh, DNS lookup, all of the kind of the network features that you would need to implement on a per service level can be handled by something like a sidecar proxy, right? So that the services communicate with their service mesh component, and then the service mesh component handles service to service. Now, Istio is probably one of the bigger names, Istio Linkerd, they're deployed alongside Kubernetes. But there's a lot of other stuff out there, including some proxyless, um, some very interesting work on proxyless service meshes. And so, what can we do? Well, come and join us. We you know we kicked off this expert group uh, about a month ago now. We've had a couple of sessions, and the next one is next Wednesday, Wednesday the 21st. We meet every two weeks at uh, 1 p.m. UTC. And so, you know, reach out to Walt or reach out to myself and yeah, just come along. Uh, the wiki link's there. So it's whatmoflinux.org slash eg containers and mesh. And there's also a link from that through to Confluence where you'll see all of the meeting notes that we've got up. Um, I'll put the slides up from here on there as well. And yeah, please come along, talk to us. We're starting to try and identify what stack we want to use for the in vehicle uh, reference implementation. Um, we also want to start working on a demo as well to demonstrate some of this functionality. So yeah, it'd be great if you could join us and I hope I see you there soon.